thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, so today we're going to do another 30 minute flow. Today I really wanted to focus on engaging the core a little bit. Nothing too crazy before anyone gets um, frightened off. So we're just going to work just a little bit into the core. We're getting into summer now and we had this amazing weather at the weekend and hopefully it will continue. Um, so really kind of engaging, tuning into that um, fire element, that sense of heat. Um, so just a little bit of core and then we're also going to work a little bit into the hips. Really opening up these um, hip flexors, moving into that especially if we're spending a lot of time sitting down in weird positions. Also if you're out in the garden as well. So really working into the hips, really working into um, the core just a little bit. So wherever you are, as usual, grabbing anything you need. So blocks, props, blankets, anything to support yourself. And then come into a nice, easy seated position. And just closing the eyes, we're just going to come in to the room and into your breath. Just taking a big inhale in through the nose. And sighing out through the mouth. Again, taking an inhale through the nose. Sign out through the mouth. Last time, inhaling through the nose. Sign out through the mouth. And then just come into a natural rhythm, pace and depth of breathing. So inhaling in and out through the nose or in and out through the nose and the mouth or in and out through the mouth especially if you're feeling a little bit clogged up with hay fever or a cold or anything like that you know just really focusing on lengthening the breath making sure that wherever you are you're breathing deeply and as you're inhaling feeling the cool air come into your body and then as you exhale, just noticing that tiny little bit of temperature change now that the air's been warmed up by your body. Just using this time to bring yourself into the present. And for the next 30 minutes, it's all about you. Gently opening the eyes, coming back into the space. So we're going to take the right hand, we're going to take it on the outer edge of that left thigh, sitting up nice and tall. We're just going to twist the face back of the room. So seeing if you can gaze over that left shoulder there. Every inhale, sitting up a little bit taller. With every exhale, see if you can see a little bit more of the back room. Trying to keep the same length and the pace of breath. Usually when we're in a twisting posture it's a little bit more constricted, a little bit trickier to breathe but really trying to focus on lengthening the breath there. Coming back to centre, switching sides, taking the left hand on the outer edge of the right thigh this time. Pushing into the fingertips, the right fingertips behind you. Sitting up nice and tall and then exhale and seeing if you can see over that right shoulder head. See how far you can see around the back of the room. Trying to make sure as well that the this twist is coming from the torso and you're not just using the neck. So you want to really make this a full torso movement. So you're starting at the base of the spine, you're twisting around, and then the head should really be the last extension of that. Another breath here. Perfect, then releasing it back, come back to centre. We're going to take the left hand down, we're going to extend the right arm all the way up and over. So you're keeping the head nice and relaxed. Switch and size, taking the right hand down, extending up with the left arm. Should feel really nice. One more time either side, taking the left hand down. If you want, you can lower the forearm down, if that's accessible to you. Extending all the way up with those right fingertips. Pushing into the... Um, the right sit bone, so really trying to anchor that sit bone down as you extend through the right arm, it should really give you a nice extension and stretch through this right side body here. Switch and sides, taking the right hand down and lowering the forearm again if you like, extending up with the left fingertips. 
And again, trying to really root down with the left sit bone this time, making sure it's anchored down. And as you're pushing with that uh, hip bone extended up, reaching away with the fingertips, you should feel that stretch all the way into the side body. It should feel really nice. Perfect, calm and back to centre. So we're going to come into a little boat pose here. So we're going to come with the feet flat on the mat. Try to sit up nice and tall with your sit bones. So you might need to lengthen the feet down a little bit, pushing them further away from the body. So you want to kind of avoid this lower back kind of rounding like this, this kind of position here. Because then you're putting a lot of strain on the back. It's not what we want. We want nice straight opening up through the torso here, rolling the shoulder heads back. So we're going to come up onto the tippy toes of those feet and that might be enough, you might feel a little bit of a oh that's my core engaged now so you can stay there if you want. Other options are we're going to lift the feet, taking them in line with the mat so they're parallel to the mat, extending the arms all the way out, reaching through those fingertips, trying to open up through the shoulder blades, keeping the back nice and straight. So we're going to hold it here for a couple of breaths. And release it down. So we're going to hug the knees in, making everything nice and small, rounding through the back, bringing the forehead down towards the knees. And we're going to come straight back in. We're going to do three of these. So we've done one. Extending the feet parallel, reaching the arms out. Breathing deeply here. Feeling all those little quivers and little shakes. That's where all the magic happens. If you're feeling this in your hip flexors, lower the feet a little bit. We don't want to feel it in the hip flexors. We want to feel it in the core. Extending the arms out, we're going to release it down, hugging the knees in, bringing the forehead down. Taking a nice deep breath here. Last time, extending the feet all the way up. Extending the arms out, opening up through the collarbones. We're going to hold for five, four, three, two, one, and release it down. Coming into a nice, easy cross-legged position. Really lengthening up through the spine there. We're going to cross the legs underneath us. We're going to come back into a child's pose. So taking the feet together, toes, big toes together, knees nice and wide, bringing the forehead down towards the mat, lengthening out through the arms, stretching those arms down, taking the forehead down. And then when you're ready, we're going to walk the hands back. We're going to come into a nice little cat cow and then move into sun salutation. So inhaling, we're going to dip the tummy down towards the ground, raising the head, really opening the collarbones again. Exhaling, arching the spine. So starting at the base of the spine, we're going to arch the cat, arch the back like an angry cat. Really arching it in, really pushing it into the palms of the hands, really pushing the spine away. Inhaling. Coming all the way forward, dipping the tummy down towards the ground. Exhaling, curling through the spine. Last time. And then coming back to a neutral spine. So we're going to come into downward facing dogs. So we're going to tuck the toes under. Maybe walk the hands forward a little bit. Before you come up, we're just going to push back into this kind of crouched position. So the toes are tucked under, getting a nice plantar stretch at the back and the soles of the feet there. Pushing into the palms of the hands, we're just going to lift the knees off, maybe just a couple inches. Really feeling the feet start to work, feeling the palms of the hands start to work. And then you're going to use that momentum to push yourself up, feeling the hips float all the way up towards the sky. Coming into a nice, easy downward facing dog here. So feel free to bring a little bit of movement, make it quite dynamic. You can roll through the toes, you can come forward and back into plank. Moving the hips side to side if you like. And then when you find a position that is working for you, just come into a little bit of stillness. Engaging with the breath. See if the breath has got a little bit faster now that we've done a little bit of core work, we're starting to heat the body up. See if you can tune into your heart rate. Is it beating fast? Is it beating slow? Seeing if you can use the breath to slow down your heart rate just a little bit by breathing deeply, by lengthening those exhales. 
taking the gaze towards the feet, we're going to step in with one foot, followed by the second foot. Coming up onto the fingertips, lengthen in halfway, and then we're going to bow it down towards the legs. Coming into this nice forward fold here. Bend on the knees, we're going to roll all the way up, coming to standing. Rolling the shoulder heads back. Should feel really nice doing that again. Rolling them back. Last time, rolling them back. From here, we're going to take the hands nice and high, inhaling, extend it up through the fingertips and come into a mini back bend here if you like. Exhaling, folding forward, sticking in that lower tummy, keeping the knees nice and soft, bringing the fingertips down towards the earth. Inhaling, coming halfway, so you can bring the hands to the shins if you like. Exhaling, plant the hands, bend the knees, stepping back to plank pose. So we're going to hang out in plank pose for a few breaths. So if you feel the need, you can drop the knees whenever you need to. Otherwise, we're going to do a little bit more core work. So coming up into plank, if that is good for you. And we're just going to hang out here. So I should have maybe brought a timer, but we're just going to take a few breaths here. So really feeling the core engage, lengthening out through those heels, making sure the palms of the hands are nice and active, pushing into the floor. breathing deeply so from here we're going to lower halfway and we're going to hold in a half weight so again if you want to drop the knees feel free otherwise keeping the knees lifted we're going to bring the elbows back flush with the body lowering halfway down pausing here keeping with the breath turning over the feet coming into a nice upward facing dog well done to feel really nice so just keep the knees on the ground for now just keep it nice and soft, really opening up the shoulders, lengthening up through that core. And then from here, we're going to take it back to child's pose. So bringing the toes together, extending the arms all the way forwards, resting the head down. It should feel really nice. Breathe in here. Trying to lengthen the breath all the way up, so trying to extend up, extending the breath all the way up into these back muscles, feeling the back expand with every inhale. And feeling it relax towards the earth on every exhale. So when you're ready, taking the gaze towards the hands, we're going to come all the way up, come into an upward facing dog. Tucking through the toes, sending the hips back, downward facing dog. So taking that right foot all the way back, so coming into three-legged dog, you want to keep the knee pointing down towards the earth. So you don't want to be all the way over here because we're going to step forward in a moment. So keeping the knee down, pointing down towards the earth. We're going to bring that knee all the way towards the right hand, right elbow. And then we're going to step the foot on the outside of that palm of the hand. So coming into lizard pose here. Taking a breath, just relaxing and seeing what's going on in the hips right now. And then when you're ready, we're going to lower that back knee down. So you might want to grab a block or a cushion here if you've got one. Or if this is fine for you, then that's totally fine. You really want to take cues from what's going on in those hips. Because you don't want to overdo it and get a, a hip flexor strain. So if you want to move forward, you're going to lower the forearms down towards the mat. If that's not accessible for you, build, you can build the floor up so you can start with blocks and props and whatever you've got handy cushions and then you can start to work your way down towards the floor so usually when we come into this pose first the hips are tight maybe they're cold as well if you're practicing in the morning usually the hips are extremely tight because of the cold weather we do live in the uk so really spending a little bit of time here just letting your body open up feeling like it's okay we're just going to move slowly and then you can start to lower your levels down and then maybe you can reach all the way the forearms onto the floor so if your forearms are on the floor i want you to think about this bent knee here's so this front knee making sure it's not opening out you want to keep it flush next to your shoulder as much as you can it will help to protect the knee joint and also will help to keep the integrity of the stretch there Perfect, so we're going to just walk the hands back if you were lowered down. Taking the right hand on the outside of that right foot, 
walking the foot in towards the middle, framing the foot with the hands, tucking the back toe under, we're going to lift the hips all the way back, extending through that right foot, bowing the head down, coming into this really wide trikonasana type shape here, your wide pyramid pose. Bending through the front knee, we're going to lower the back knee gently down towards the mat, walking the hands back, coming into runner's lunge. So the right toes are pointing all the way up towards the ceiling there. Really working into this hamstring. Walking the hands all the way forward. Framing that front foot again, and then we're going to walk the right foot over towards the right edge of the mat. Coming into a nice pigeon, so we're going to flatten that back foot. Walking the foot all the way over and then gently lowering the knee down towards the mat. Taking a moment here to get yourself set up. So keeping that front foot flexed so the toes are pointing back towards the shin really helps to protect the knee joint. Depending on how open your hips are, you might feel that bringing the foot a little bit closer towards the body feels better for you. So the closer the foot is, the easier the pose is. The further the foot is away, the more you're working in towards those hips. So wherever you are, you want to kind of make sure that you're balanced. Your hips are not sending you from one side to the, or to the other. Again, this is where blocks and props can come in super handy. Making it nice and comfortable, making sure your hips are level. And then when you're ready, we're going to walk the hands down again. So Feel free to use a block to prop your forehead up or a cushion is probably more comfortable. Stretching the arms all the way out. Lower the forehead down. If you don't have any props or blocks and you're kind of up here, you can use the fists, use the arms. You know, use your body to kind of make the pose comfortable. Should feel really nice, really working into that hip. Whenever you're ready to take and gaze straight ahead, we're going to walk the hands back, making sure that they're on either edge of your mat, tucking through the back toes. We're going to send that right foot all the way back to downward facing dog, lifting it all the way up. So just pedaling through the feet here, pushing into one heel and then the other. Just noticing any discrepancy. So we've worked onto the right side quite a lot. So seeing if that feels a little bit different to the left side. It's totally fine if it does because we're just going to even it out now in a minute. So taking the left leg all the way up. Remember to keep the knee pointing down towards the ground. Exhale, bending that knee, bringing it really close all the way in towards that left elbow. And then stepping it on the outer edge of that left hand. So seeing where we're at in the left side, it might feel a little bit tighter than the right. Again, that's okay. Just working with wherever you're at. Okay, perfect. So we're going to lower that back knee down, flattening through the back foot. So you can stay here if you're feeling it in the hip flexors, or again, you can start to walk the hands forward, really working into the hips. Again, propping up if you need to. It can feel really nice. Using props like this can just let you really sink into the posture. And breathe in deeply. If you want to make it a little bit more intense, you can tuck the toes and lift the knee and take the foot back just a little inch or two. Or if you're feeling where you are, that's totally cool as well. Remembering to watch out for that bent knee, make sure it's not falling out towards the left side. You want to keep it nice and close to the body, as close to the body as you can. From here, we're going to walk the hands back if you were folded down. We're going to heel toe that foot all the way in between the hands, so making sure that the palms of the hands are framing that foot. Tucking through the back toes, we're going to come into that nice wide lunge again, so taking the hips all the way up and back, coming on to the fingertips. Extending through the left hamstring, bowing the head down. Just breathing deep here. Really softening through the shoulders. Usually we can find that in poses like this, our shoulders are way up at our ears, so you want to make an active effort to relax them down. 
Coming forward, we're going to lower that back knee down, keeping the toes tucked under. We're going to walk the hands back, coming up into that runner's lunge. So taking the left toes back, making sure they're pointing up towards the ceiling foot, flex there. Perfect. From here, we're going to walk the hands all the way forward. We're going to continue our journey all the way towards the right. So heel toe in that foot, all the way towards the right wrist. And then lowering the knee down so the knee is in line with your left hand. Flattening the back foot. Again, take a little moment here to feel what the best position for you is. So again, if you're feeling like you're a little bit lifted here, or if your hips are a little uneven, it's throwing you off kilter. Propping something under there, under the bent leg can really help. And if you're thinking, this is fine, this is totally easy, you can bring that front shin bone so that it's parallel or more parallel towards the front of your mat. Or you can tuck that back to under, you can heel toe it back a little bit and then flatten the foot down again. From here we're going to walk the hands forward again, come into that nice easy pigeon fold there. So doing whatever you like with the hands, I really like to extend them all the way out. You might want to use them underneath your forehead. You might want to use some pillows, blocks. Whatever you are, just being with the posture for a few breaths. Now that we've got ourselves properly set up, you might find that your body's like, that. oh, we want to move now, but really stick with it, see what's going on. <clears throat> Breathing deeply. You ready? Take the gaze forward. We're going to walk these hands all the way back to meet the legs. Taking the hands either side of your mat, tucking through that back toe. We're going to come up into downward facing dog again. So taking your time getting here. And then we're going to pedal through the feet again. So you should feel a little bit more evened out. And pushing both heels in towards the mat. Taking the gaze down towards the knees or the belly button. Keeping the neck nice and relaxed. Rolling the shoulder blades away from the ears. So when you're ready, we're looking towards the hands. We're going to step in with one foot, coming into an easy seat. Followed by the second foot. Planting the feet on the mat. We're going to lower all the way down so that we're on our backs. Keeping the feet as they are. Rolling all the way down. Until we're flat on our back. So we're going to come into dead pigeon now. So we're just going to point the right foot all the way up towards the ceiling. Giving that ankle a little roll one direction. And then pausing, doing it in the opposite direction. Coming back to stillness. So making sure that foot's nice and flexed. We're going to cross that ankle over the left thigh there. Seeing where we're at. So you'll notice a, sim a similar <laughs> symmetry towards the um, pigeon pose that we've just done, so this knee is nice and bent. So bending the left foot, lifting the left foot up off the mat, we're going to interlace our hands around that shin, and bringing the knees towards our body. So this is more of a passive pigeon, you instead of pushing our body weight onto the hips, we're letting grab to do a little bit of the work for us. Breathing deeply. So again, making sure that crossed over leg is nice and that crossed over foot is nice and active. So flexing the toes there helps to protect the knee. It encourages the body to work in the hip where it should be. Giving that leg a little squeeze in, seeing if you can take it a little bit closer, and then releasing the left foot down, uncrossing that right leg. Giving the knees a little shake out and then we're going to come straight into the other side. So taking the left foot up towards the ceiling, doing a little circle in one direction with the ankle, stopping and then we're going to do a little circles in the opposite direction. Then we're going to flex the foot, so making sure that um, the toes are pointing back towards the shins. 
crossing that left ankle over the right thigh this time. So this might be enough. You might feel that this you don't want to bring the knees in. It feels really nice here. So I encourage you to stay with that. If that's where your body's at, I want you to do the practice that works for you. If you want to take it a little bit further and you feel like it would feel good, lifting that right knee off, we're going to interlace the hands around the shin, giving it a little hug in. Squeeze and in towards the body. Relax in the head. Relax in your jaw as well. Kind of a little tension in the jaw. So if you're anything like me and you're clenching your jaw at times, then just making an effort to relax that. Let it be a little bit looser. We don't need to hold any tension here. And when you're ready, we're going to release that. So releasing the right foot down towards the mat and crossing that left leg. Giving the knees a little shake. Taking the hands along flush next to the body. Palms of the hands pressing in. We're going to do a little bit of a pelvis tilt. So curling under the pelvis as if we're going to lift, but we're not doing that quite yet. So really what you're thinking is you're pushing this mid part of the back in towards the ground. So we're going to curl the pelvis under and release it, arching the back slightly. So this movement, this like curling under of the pelvis will help to protect your tailbone as we lift up into bridge. So plant the hands alongside the body, curling under through the tailbone, pushing into the arms, going to lift, peeling the spine up off the mat, pushing into the arms, breathing deeply. So if you've got room to take this pose a little bit further, you can roll the shoulder heads underneath, interlacing the hands, pushing into the arms. Making sure your knees aren't falling out towards the sides. And when you're ready, uncrossing the hands, taking them back alongside the body, gently lowering down. Just the same way that we come into the posture. And then we're going to hug in both knees. We're going to have a little rock side to side. Maybe do some circles if that feels good. Give yourself a final squeeze in. And then we're going to release it down to Shavasana. So taking the feet as wide as your mat. Palms of the hands turning facing upwards towards the ceiling. Closing the eyes. Take a few deep breaths in and out through the nose or in through the nose and out through the mouth. Whichever feels comfortable for you. And then noticing that temperature change. So as you inhale, feeling the cold air coming into your body, filling up your lungs, feel your body heat up that air. And as you exhale, feeling the warmer air just swoosh out of your body. Continue the process. Feel any areas of tension, just focusing the breath in towards those areas, so really breathing in to any areas of tension. And then when you're ready, start to bring a little bit of life into those fingers and the toes. And so these hands and really lengthen up through the body. So really stretch and outline on your back, extend the feet out, point the toes, see how long you can make your body. And then hugging in the knees, making yourself nice and small, and then gently rolling onto whichever side feels comfortable and making your way back up to a comfortable seated position, which whatever that is for you, if it's cross-legged or like straight out or out in front of you and kneeling, find the position that works for you. Just taking another breath, just settling in. Taking the arms nice and high, looking up towards the thumbs, bringing them down into the eyebrow centre, the third eye, bringing them in, pressing them in towards the heart. 
and it down towards the earth and the head down so namaste thank you all so much for coming to practice today i really hope you enjoyed it if you did please let me know um send me a message a comment um, like it and share it with anyone who uh, might be interested in taking part in the video and I hope that whatever you've got planned for the rest of your day and the rest of your week I hope you have a great time and I'll see you again soon.